Hello and welcome back my friends. Today we're going to be talking Hugo culture everywhere. Why? Why not? You see, I had a pile of these stumps sitting in the corner of the yard. I had to find a use for them. It's not good just to allow big piles of brush and stumps and that sort of thing to sit for too long. They could become home to pests and that sort of thing. So it was either find a use for them. I was hoping to maybe create another Hugo culture mound, but I'm kind of running out of space. I've got several Hugo culture beds or I was going to actually have to take this off site and go drop it at a green waste facility, pay money to do so, and expend quite a bit of energy doing that as well. So I came up with this idea, which is to utilize some of the pathway area where I'm not growing, and so I won't be disturbing anything that's already growing there. And I've been digging these holes and plopping in these large stumps. I'm going to allow them to just break down right here in place, and it's going to be a beautiful thing. Eventually, maybe I will plop a few plants in these pathway areas, who knows? But I just wanted to share with you this whole concept, this idea. It's working out great. Honestly, it's a little bit of work to dig these holes and having the right tools to do this type of a task is really important. So I highly recommend using a pickaxe or a pick mattox. If you've got hard soil, clay soil, rocks, lots of roots, it's gonna make your job a whole lot easier. And so I've been digging these holes and let me show you also in my raised bed, hidden hugo culture. Now the digging has been a lot easier in these beds, but you can see I'm doing the same thing. I'm kind of replacing some of the other older broken down wood. As you can see, here's a piece I pulled out full of mycelium, hyphae strands. We're gonna break this up and throw these in the holes as well. But I'm just burying these stumps within my raised bed, hidden hugel cultures and digging these holes in the pathways. It's a great way to utilize this organic material instead of, like I said, paying to get it off site. Uh, these are resources and you're also helping to sequester carbon when you take these materials like this and bury them under the soil. So good for the environment as well. All right, so this here is called a pickaxe or a pick mattox. And you got the pick end for driving through the hard soil, uh, clay, rock, and then you've got the flat end here. Tear through roots with ease, also good for doing a bit of tillage. Just driving that down maybe five or six inches, helping to break up the soil. So I'm gonna show you an example here in this patch of soil here. First, I'm gonna scrape back the first four to six inches, which is not the native soil, but the breakdown of the wood chips and the mulch have been laying down. All right, now I'm gonna start driving this pick end into that soil, like so. I'm prying it up. Now, because the top end is so heavy, it's good to have your hand towards the head while you're beginning your motion of driving the tool. Then as you're going down, you can slide your hand down. And as you go back up, slide it back towards your hand. That's the easiest way to go about this. So we're just breaking it up right now. Then you can use the opposite end of the tool to shovel it out. See, this area has got some backfill in there too. You never know what you're gonna get on this particular piece of property. Look at here, I'm even finding money. It's an old nickel. Let me wash it off. It's not that old because it's not an Indian head. 
Uh, it's just in 1977. Oh well, nickel found is nickel earned. <laughs> Before I continue, I just want to share with you the native soil here in my garden is predominantly clay. Occasionally you find backfill areas too, so who knows. I found lots of different debris and such in my garden. I am a fan of no dig style gardening, but in these urban and suburban lots a lot of times there has to be some sort of excavation and tillage taking place so that you can clean the land. That was definitely the case here. I'm still finding little pieces of debris all the time. Now, nickel's not gonna hurt anything, but I've found buckets of stuff in the soil here. To be honest with you, I've found broken toilets, so who knows what was going on here before I arrived, but I'm constantly working the soil before I get it to a point where now it's a no dig. So in this area, I've never disturbed much more than maybe six inches down. So we're excavating, we're gonna put in the log, but as far as clay soils go, I've been able to overcome that challenge over the years predominantly by practicing mulching, chop and drop, and applying compost teas, which are microbes that we proliferated with a tea brew over a 24-hour period. And those microbes work the soil. They help break down the organic components of the soil and turn it into more of a humus profile. Now, another benefit in the way I've been conditioning this soil here is with the fungal activity. Now, the mycelium that's been spreading throughout has come by way of wood chips being introduced into the garden. I've also inoculated many of the areas of the garden with a Kingstrophyria mushroom spawn. And although I didn't have any fruiting bodies pop up this year, when I did have fruits popping up, I was harvesting quite a bit. There was a lot of mycelial growth happening just below the wood chip level. Exciting to see. But that fungus will also help to break down these organic materials into more of a humus profile. So these are all things I highly recommend. If you're dealing with a clay soil, a hardened soil, again, introduce that mulch, practice chop and drop, bring in the microbes through compost teas, and try to inoculate different areas of the garden with either mushroom spawn or using other products like mycos. You just sprinkle a little bit of that product on the roots of your plants and it creates that mycelium contact from the roots of your plants, helping their reach to spread out to bring up the nutrients and the water. So these are all beneficial ways to improve your soil's quality. With that being said, I'm gonna to continue to dig this hole so I can bury that stump and have a little hugel culture right here in this pathway. Now check out what this tool will do to those little roots there. Gone. And granted, those are some small roots, but this will go through up to two to three inches without much of an issue. And although this tool is easier than a shovel, less work, it still is work, it's exercise. And I'm all for it. Getting out in the garden, getting a little sweat, a little workout. I'd much rather be out in nature than in a gym. There's a big root. It's almost like butter. Just backfill that. See, at some point, somebody even laid down some sod. I keep getting this plastic netting everywhere, which is at the bottom of a lot of those sod rolls. But you could add in some food scraps into this hole as well if you wanted. Some worms from your worm bin. So there you have it, the stump is gone. We've conditioned the soil. We've got a hugel culture right in place here in the pathway now, over time. That wood's gonna break down, become sponge-like, and end up providing moisture throughout the summer months. Some of the surrounding plants, like these little sprouted greens coming up here on the edge. So all in all, I find this to be a great benefit uh, if you are into gardening to just bury wood in different areas of your yard. And so I hope you got something out of this video today. The sun is headed down. I've got a little bit more work to do before I upload this video. 
So with that, have yourself a great day. And remember, it's up to you to make it happen. So get out there and make your dreams a reality. Until next time, this is Dan from PlantAbundance.com. Take care. I'll be talking to you again soon. Here's another big old stump.